Thank you very much, uh, uh, Francisco. I feel like being moderator more than the speaker, but uh, um, let me maybe add a few words about um, religion and politics in China today to the uh, very uh, comprehensive presentation led by Francisco. Uh, first of all, the, I think the Communist Party has always had a complicated relationship with uh, religious organizations and religions as a whole since the regime on the paper is the atheist regime. And that, that's a big difference with the, uh, with the regime which preceded the uh, Communist Party, Republic of China, or Imperial China, where uh, religious organizations were better, much better accepted uh, uh, by, by the government. And it's also the case if you look at other Chinese societies than like Hong Kong or Taiwan, um, the, the cohabitation or coexistence between the state, the government, and religious organizations is much easier than in mainland China. Um, now, there's been a relaxation of uh, religious uh, control in China since the beginning of the reform 40 years ago. And uh, as uh, Francis was saying, there's been a revival of religious activities. Uh, but I think a very important distinction which needs to be made has been, uh, has been uh, already alluded to by Francisco is the, 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 the distinction the Communist Party makes between uh, freedom of faith, which is uh, well accepted, mm -hmm. and freedom of uh, religious organizations. So religious organizations need to be um, accepted and, and, and monitored and also uh, supervised by, by the Communist Party. And, uh, uh, for a long time, it was the SARA, which is a funny uh, acronym, uh, the State Administration for Religious Affairs, which has been in charge of the five accepted religions in China. Uh, and now the, the whole administration has been transferred as, uh, under the Communist Party Central Committee of uh, United Front uh, Work uh, Department. Uh, but but uh, the, f the way the party state, if I may use the term, uh, uh, um, administers uh, religions and religious organization has remained the same and the five accepted religions are um, Taoism, Buddhism, uh, Christianity or Protestant churches, uh, Islam and, and Catholicism. So it means that on the paper at least Judaism, Orthodoxy are not recognized uh, uh, or not uh, 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 administered uh, the same way as these uh, five religions. Although there is a department within the administration in charge of other religions, uh, including in the same basket all these uh, smaller religions in China. Now, in this um, sinicization of religious activities, there is one thing which is very important, um, which was also mentioned briefly by Francisco, is the distinction made by the current leadership, Xi Jinping, uh, between the religions which are presented as Chinese, or mainly Chinese, as Taoism, but also Buddhism, which entered China in the first century of uh, uh, BC, uh, and West, and what, what the authorities uh, deem as uh, Western religions, including Islam, Christianity, and, and, and Catholicism. And, and the way those various religious groups or organizations are managed is very different. One of the concerns of the authority regarding Buddhism is the commercialization of Buddhism. Uh, the fact that a lot of Buddhist uh, um, temples, abbots are involved in, um, in business activities which make them very rich, but also which is a perversion of religious activities. And that's one of the dangers which has been, I think, identified by the Xi Jinping even more than his predecessors. Uh, but for, for, for uh, non-Chinese religions, um, I think the, the danger of, which has been perceived by the authorities is the danger of, of penetration of other, other countries. Uh, if you take the example of Christianity, the, 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 the major danger identified by the authorities in the influence of American or Western uh, very active evangel ev evangelical churches, in particular the ones based in the U.S. Uh, now, it's not, a, it's, it's not a danger which is isolated from politics uh, because um, one of the expressions <coughs> of the civil society, which is a manifestation of the civil society's kind of uh, opening up and um, diversification has been the um, large appeal of Christianity among a number of, um, I mean, uh, elite members. Um, if you, and that's a very intriguing um, kind of association for the authorities because you've seen, for instance, more and more uh, dissidents or human rights lawyers in China who become Christian uh, in, the, um, in the middle of their um, 
uh, of the um, endeavor to protect human rights or to um, sort of put pressure on the authorities to open the political system. So that adds up on the, on, on the um, danger which is perceived by the authorities by the, uh, in, uh, in particular today. There's been a number of, uh, Francis has mentioned a number of examples of uh, stricter controls since Xi Jinping took over in 2012 of religious activities. And one of the best known examples, as far as Christians are concerned, has been the destruction of crosses of a, a number of uh, provinces, including in Zhejiang province, where according to some uh, data, uh, something like 15, 12 to 17,000 crosses have been destroyed in this uh, one single province, uh, which for long, for some five years at least, was ruled by someone very close to Xi Jinping, uh, someone called Xia Baolong. So, so it's very much sort of also linked to political developments uh, de uh, in, 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 in China, de uh, emerging in China since uh, Xi Jinping took over. Now, as far as Islam is concerned, of course, uh, the, um, Francisco's mentioned uh, um, the recent developments in, in Xinjiang. Um, one thing I would like to add regarding Xinjiang is the fact that the Uyghur movement in favor of independence or in, you know, in favor of autonomy, political autonomy, by tradition, was not religious. It was a secular movement, the Kemalist movement of Turkish, uh, you know, Kemalist uh, uh, influenced uh, influence by um, uh, Turkish modernizers. Um, it became religious uh, rather recently, actually, in the last maybe 20 years. Uh, 20 years ago, Xinjiang was not very religious. Uh, the Islam practice, practiced by most Xinjiang Uyghur people, Kazakh and others, is more kind of Sufi, moderate Islam. But it has, there's been elements of uh, of radical Islam coming up, uh, which has been also linked to the fight for more autonomy or even independence from the Xinjiang uh, in the last 20 years. So that has been a recent development as far as the political situation in Xinjiang is concerned, and which explain, doesn't justify, but explain the reaction of the authorities. Now, the, the policy which has been um, privileged by the Chinese authorities the last uh, few months or years is in, that's something we can discuss if we have a bit of time in the Q&A, so in my view very counterproductive because it, it may create more, more um, actually more radical militants than, than solving the, the issue. Now, you mentioned, and that's one of the motivations uh, for uh, the Chinese society, this is more in people in the Chinese society in mainland China to embrace religion, lack of trust in society. Now, one of the answers of the authority to that lack of trust, which is, I think, admitted by a lot of uh, politicians or a lot of uh, government people in China, has been the um, establishment of the, tr the, on the trial basis of what has been called in China the social credit system. And the social credit system's um, aim is precisely to restore trust uh, among um, citizens or between the government and citizens. Whether it's going to work is another story because it's a very much a top-down kind of um, endeavor and project. And uh, I have some doubts because uh, clearly in what people try to create in, in embracing religious activities and, and, and creating community of faith at the, at the grassroots is precisely community of trusts which uh, have been um, sort of put into danger with the uh, um, sort of uh, both the communist regime but also the, um, um, the 40 years of uh, reform opening but also um, a strategy which has f focused very much on of, of improving material life but not spiritual life at least spiritual void has been a big uh, issue. Now um, we have to put things into perspective in the sense that and we may disagree uh, Francis and I to the magnitude of uh, religious activities, how important religion is for Chinese today. Uh, I would add one thing, I mean, to start with, is the fact that contrary to the West, or even including uh, uh, Muslim countries, in China you can embrace, you can sort of be, get involved in various religions at the same time. You can be all Christian, uh, Buddhist at the same time, which is for us Westerners pretty hard to understand. Uh, so, uh, so the approach to religions may be very different from us. Um, the second thing is, in, in many, you know, urbanized middle class uh, people, 
religion doesn't matter that much. It's not, you know, it's not something which is structuring their life. Yes, people go to the temple, sometimes practice religions, or practice of some, of, of have some kind of faith, but how important the religion, religion is for them in their daily life is something which we have to put into perspective. The other thing we have to, I mean, Francis has mentioned a few figures. Uh, there are discussions about, I mean, Islam is clearly the Uyghur 20 million, the Hui 20 million or so, so it's, it will remain a minority religion in China, uh, which need to be, needs to be protected and guaranteed, as, but uh, at the same time, it's not going to be a big issue. Now, the big issue for uh, the Chinese leadership today is whether Christianity is going to be emerged so much that it's going to, have, you know, to become more important uh, than any other religion. Now, there are debates about the number of uh, Christian people in China. Clearly, the Catholic is still a minority, it's 1% of the population at most. But, but Protestants uh, and evangelical churches are developing very quickly. So experts kind of are divided about how many Christians you have in China. Some people uh, claim that there are more Christian than party, Communist Party members, so around 100 million Christians in China. I think a more reasonable figure would be 70 million, but still, it's, and it's, it's a large figure for China because it goes, I mean, the, the base was something at the end of the Cultural Revolution, <coughs> around 20 million at most. So it has increased very quickly. And, and, and the, the, the fact that among the elites, uh, you've got more and more Christian in China. And among the counter elites, so the elites, political elites, uh, you know, who want to put pressure on the system to open a political system, uh, are also very often Christian. So, so Christianity is perceived, for these reasons, uh, even more of a danger by the uh, Chinese, Chinese government. So the, the, the question is, what, what kind of cohabitation in, in, the, in the coming years um, the government will um, um, accept with, with the, a lot of churches which are um, not really underground but which are tolerated at the local level but are not really associated with what we call the major uh, protestant organization which is the uh, Three Self uh, Christian Association which is uh, under uh, the supervision of the government. So you've got a lot, what we call a lot of house churches in China when they remain small, they tolerate it. When they get too big, they dismantle. Or they, and, they, uh, and so, uh, but again, the, uh, as Francisco was mentioning at the end of his presentation, the, the, the situation is not black and white, it's kind of gray. Uh, because they, you've got a lot of tolerance uh, among, uh, among, uh, among the authorities. For reasons which have to do with the fact that religion is perceived by the authorities as useful to some degree. Um, so, uh, to put the use of Marx, uh, Marx uh, expression, which is well known, uh, uh, religion, the opium of the people, it's an opium which, if it's used as a, in a moderate uh, way, is, is, is perceived as uh, a stabilizing force uh, for, for, for the Chinese society, including by the authorities. Now, and religious organizations also are, play a useful role in, in charity, in social programs, and they Again, I mean, we have some. We, we, if you look at the past, I mean, particularly the Kuomintang, when the Kuomintang was in power in China, you see the same kind of views of religious organization to supplement the, the, the government's social policy, which sometimes uh, are not, uh, you know, strong enough to uh, um, um, fulfill all the needs of the of the poor, or the disadvantage of the Chinese society. So again. Uh, I think there is some um, acceptance of religious organization, but the party wants to, con to be uh, in, in, in control of any kind of organization. Finally, and that's the bottom line, I think, of the authorities, this, this uh, sort of um, danger of uh, what the Communist Party calls foreign infiltration. And foreign infiltration, not only for changing the soul of the, soul of the Chinese people, but also changing their political mind and sort of um, um, precipitating uh, a peaceful, uh, uh, evolution of the regime towards another kind of political system. And that's the, why Christianity will remain perceived by the authorities with a lot of suspicion in the coming up. And much more the Protestants, I uh, have to say, than the Catholic Church as such. So now the context itself, and I, I've been too long maybe on, on, on religion, but it's uh, is a context in which the Communist Party is trying to strengthen its ideological um, um, discourse and, and, and propaganda. Um, but here you've got an irony in the sense that China is, and the, the Chinese society has never been more globalized. Uh, the youth uh, 
uh, is you know very much plugged in uh, and and connected to the outside world. And at the same time, it looks like the Communist Party today under Xi Jinping is trying to isolate or re isolate China from the rest of the world. And here there is a big irony in the in the situation and and, and think attention for the future of uh, China's relation with the outside world. And that's uh, uh, something we we may. Uh, come back to in the queue.